and today I'm going to be discussing my own trading method which I use on my own account with my own risk parameters and we all have different account sizes and risk profiles so that needs to be considered when you listen to any trading education such as this presentation. Now today we're going to discuss some of the benefits of using order flow in trading and what I personally look for or tools. Now I will try to keep this light on trading jargon and terminology because I know people will be new to order flow. But for those who don't understand some of the terminology here, uh, as Reid mentioned, there is a free order flow foundation course on the Jigsaw Trading website. Um, I would also prefer to hold questions till the end as I should clear things up as we move along. Now we will be looking at live markets using the Jigsaw tools. So whilst a lot of this information can actually be applied to any order flow tool, we're going to have to focus as we watch the live markets on the Jigsaw tools. Now, tape reading and order flow analysis are effectively the same thing. You're watching the flow of orders and their impact on price to see how the market participants are reacting and where they may be getting trapped. And it's being in a mindset of putting yourself in other traders' shoes. Now, most trading methods focus on identifying an area to take a trade. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's only part of the story identify these potential trade locations because you expect traders to act a certain way when price reaches that point. And analyzing order flow allows you to see if trader behavior really is changing or continuing as expected when price reaches that location. And this allows you to confirm trades before you, t before you take them and also helps you to manage trades by monitoring whether the majority of traders are turning against you or not. Now, order flow is a discretionary skill. And if you bring order flow into your trading, you have to embrace that fact. Now understand that discretionary doesn't mean no rules. And there's also no law that says a discretionary approach should be more difficult than, mech than a mechanical approach. In fact, the process that many people go through of working your way through hundreds of mechanical trading systems is a little like trying to find a needle in a haystack. It's all or nothing. It works or it doesn't. You don't progress with each failed attempt. Discretionary trading developing a skill and trading is a skill. Progress is in steps, it's visible and it's measurable. You know whether you're improving or not because you can see it. Now most traders I know use price charts to define where to trade and order flow to reject or refine that entry. And most day traders will look at a longer time frame chart before starting their trading day but there are some traders out there that happily trade using order flow and no charts at all. In fact, we have a free video called Day Trading Without Charts, if you Google that, on our website that explains that approach to trading. The order flow is like reading a story. All stories are different, but they use the same language. And order flow has its own language, and that drives the behavior of traders. So a good example of this would be a market where sellers are predominant, and price is moving down to a level of support. As you move down to a potential area of support, you might see one of the following. You might see large sellers no longer participating, but the market still moving down on small sell side participation. So the behavior of some participants is changing. You might get to support, and sellers are hitting it aggressively before and after we go through that price and in that case there is no observable changing behavior. Sorry about the volume here. We could get to the support area and nobody wants to sell at a certain price. We retrace a few ticks back to that price and again nobody wants to sell there. And there's a clear and observable changing behavior, a lack of commitment at one or more prices. Is the sound still coming and going guys? So see, we get to an area and sellers keep hitting aggressively, the market is not reacting to that selling. It's no longer moving down. Sellers are getting trapped. Let me just see if I can sort that volume out. Maybe something I can't sort out. Yeah, I think we might have to live with that. I have no idea why it's doing this. Peter, do you, have, do you have another way of calling? You, are you calling it on the phone or over a um, mic? I'm actually using a mic. Okay, do you have any way that you can hook up your phone to your headset? 
Not right now, no. Um, okay. I mean, I could try via Skype if we can go via Skype. Yeah, no, that, it wouldn't work like that. I mean, it, it's not too bad, uh, but I just it, yeah. wanted to throw it out there in case you had that ready. But if not, it's not a huge deal. Okay, okay. Obviously, got a tech issue. Okay, next thing we might see as we come to support is we get to an area and it suddenly ticks up with large size trades, so obvious buy side aggression. And in this case, buyers are initiating a new move up. Now, many people say, well, order flow can't work because it's short term analysis and HFT is dominating that time frame. Yet, order flow events like this take minutes to play out on thicker markets like the e mini SP 500 futures. And it's a bit like saying, well, swing trading can't work because day traders are dominating that time frame. So for now, I just ask you to suspend any belief that HFTs have made trading impossible. Any of you that take a few days to watch for the things I'll show you today will see they're reasonably clear and you do have time to act upon them. Now if you're watching, say, a five minute buy chart, you might not notice the difference between the scenarios we just discussed. You'd see price go down to support maybe through it a few ticks and not really have any idea if the behavior of buyers and sellers was changing. And with no appreciation of where the bulk of people got positioned and where the stops got run, how much does where it went tell you? And this image here is typical of that dilemma. We'd usually look at the low and the high of a move for support and resistance. Volume profile over here shows you that right now, not where the bulk of traders are positioned. We've seen no evidence of a stop run because of the poor volume outside and above trading here. So we can presume at this point that shorts are most likely still in the market for now. And price alone can tell you that. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that your analysis will always be 100% right. I'm just suggesting that this particular market mindset of understanding where positions are and which side the order flow is on is going to make you more right than the study of price alone. Now, this doesn't mean that charts are useless. In fact, the more volatile a market is, the more useful charts become. But on markets with low volatility, such as US Treasuries, proprietary traders will find it enough just to see a daily chart before the session starts and then trade without an intraday chart at all. They just trade the order flow. And a lot of proprietary trading firms will have their new traders start off trading without charts and only once they are profitable without charts, they let them incorporate charts into their trading. It's absolutely the reverse of what retail traders do. Now, order flow analysis also looks at the behavior of resting orders or limit orders in the market and how they are being manipulated, either by hiding their real intent or putting in large orders to deceive you into thinking the market is stronger or weaker than it actually is. And we often see iceberg orders small bid or offer is shown and the actual amount of liquidity is much much higher and we then also see spoof orders or fake orders where orders simply disappear as price gets close to them and watching this specific activity of bids and offers helps us understand the behavior of those more predatory traders now don't think of order flow as just one set of techniques and certainly don't just look at the techniques I'll show you now and think that's all there is. All order flow tools are based on a common set of concepts. So think of order flow in the same way you think of price chart. Order flow tools present certain information in a logical manner. And like price charts, there's lots of ways to use this information. So there's no one way to use order flow tools. There is one thing you absolutely should do to keep it simple. Now, many novice traders go through a period of adding more and more indicators to a chart looking for that perfect combination of indicators to tell them when to get into a trade. More and more things to their chart but end up not being able to make a decision. It's analysis paralysis. And as traders progress, they realize that more is not necessarily better and over time drop the majority of their indicators and keep their chart simple. Many of these exact same traders that saw the wisdom of keeping their chart simple, they make exactly the same mistake when they adopt order flow. Instead of keeping it simple, bringing in one or two order flow elements at a time, they take every indicator they can find, order flow indicator they can find off the internet, their screens, and end up with exactly the same analysis paralysis. So it pays to keep things simple, not turn it into a science project. And those that keep it simple will see progress in hours when they adopt order flow. And this doesn't mean you become an expert in hours, but it does mean you start to see patterns recur 
five or six sessions of watching the order flow. Now, if you're starting out with order flow, you probably have a desire to focus on order flow to help you enter trades. And there is nothing wrong with that. But for many traders, it is easier to focus initially on using order flow to manage your trades. To decide early on if this trade will work for you or not. And that way you make your losses smaller. And often you'll see a trade go your way a few ticks, realize it isn't going to work for you because it's hitting a stopping point in the order flow. And that stopping point will not be visible on your price chart. And you can often cut a trade at a small profit before it gets, goes against you because of this. And this is the reason we do management first, or we say that managing trades the first step with order flow is simply because it's easier to gauge momentum than it is to gauge if the market is turning for those people that are new to order flow. Now, as you study order flow, just keep in mind that your analysis doesn't stop once you enter the market. The first few minutes of a trade is when you have the greatest risk of losses. So if the trade looks to be an obvious loser, there's a overwhelming order flow against you, no point in staying in, hoping it will turn back before it's your stop. On the other hand, when a trade has gone your way and you have some breathing room in the trade, there really is no need to focus so intently on the order flow. You can relax and you can let the trade work out. So order flow isn't something you need to obsess over on every tick. It's a tool you use at the appropriate time. And on your screen now are the Pixel tools. So over here on the right, we have something called a summary tape. And it's a side-by-side -side summary of time and sales, or a side-by-side -side summary of what's traded at each price. Now, it doesn't show individual transactions, a summary of them at each level it trades. And we can see two quantities here, or two volumes. The 184 on the left is the sell, quantity, and the 86 on the right is the buy quantity. So it doesn't show individual transactions, but a summary at each level that trades. And as we move to a new level, a new line of the summary tape. So a red line means we ticked down from here, and a green line means we ticked up from here. Now, there is some overlapping functionality between the summary tape here and the screen over on the right, the pretty red and blue screen on the right, the depth and sales. But I keep the summary tape open because it generates audio alerts and visual alerts for various order flow events, such as iceberg orders being executed. Um, you can also see the charts. And so if we just look up here, this red triangle, this red triangle means the sell side iceberg order being executed at that price. Blue triangles you see here, these are buy side um, iceberg orders being executed. Um, now some some people prefer to use a summary tape to get into the flow or to get you know get into the flow of the orders. I focus more on the depth and sales, so for now I'm going to minimize that because I don't really uh, keep that on my screen much. If we look over on the far right tool over here on the far right is reconstructed, and that's Jigsaw's version of the time and sales. Now, it's always good to know which side of the market the larger traders are on, and this tool does that and a lot more. Now, there's two main things I'm looking for on the tape. First of all, if I'm in a trade, I want to see large traders on my side. Now, there will always be large trades on both sides, but you want to see the majority on your side. So if I've just entered, there's a flood of large trades against me and, very importantly, price moving against me, I will consider my trade to be in peril. Now what may come as a surprise is the usefulness and the frequency of seeing where large traders are trapped. And this is really down to the amount of very large scalpers we have in the market. So when you see large buyers hitting the market but no longer moving the market, their reaction is fairly swift. And on most days, this is both frequent and fairly clear, and it's one of the first things you should be looking out for. So you'll see large trades followed by the market moving in their direction, then more large trades and more moves in their direction, and that cycle will continue, and then you'll suddenly see that the large trades are not getting any movement their way. But there's a pause. It's almost, you can almost feel the pain of these guys that sinks in, and then the market swiftly moves in the other direction. And this is partly because these guys know they're trapped and they get out of the way, and partly because predatory traders will push the market against them. It's frequent, and it happens on most days, and it's clear, but you don't necessarily want to jump and trade this as a standalone signal. 
you want to see this in context because the reaction can be fairly small if it's just occurring in the middle of nowhere. By context, I mean that you want to see this around a price you wanted to enter the market anyway. And that be, could be because you identified the area in your longer term analysis or because of developing action in today. And with good context, you have more chance of follow through. So I'm usually looking for this sort of action at a level that I've identified in my pre-market or a step in the intraday volume profile or what I call a measured move. Measured moves involve nothing more really than where the average swing size in the market and watching the action when the current move is approximately normal swing size extreme. So this means that I'm not watching this reconstructed tape all the time. I'm just glancing across every few minutes and then a little more frequently as we reach an area of interest. Now I personally only watch the large trades on the reconstructed tape and I also have it filtered to show just the large trades for the last three minutes so I know that I'm only glancing across at recent activity and that's just one way to use the time in sales. Now there are people to have it showing all the trades so that they can get a better feel for the pace of the tape and there's nothing wrong with that but I prefer to get the pace of the tape from the depth and sales and there's no trader that can watch everything so if you look at order flow you have to pick the things that resonate with you the most not the things that I use or your friend use or some trainer use the things that resonate with you the most and this particular view is what resonates with me the most if we go to the left, the, the screen with the two blue and red columns is the depth and sales. This is a fully functional trading dome with many additional features unique to Jigsaw designed to make it easier to absorb the information. And some of these features will be obvious to the casual observer because they're in additional columns that just don't exist on other domes. The features are more related to the way it, the dome flows and the feel for the market it gives you. Now for those of you that know the dome, it would be reasonable comment to say, well, that jigsaw dome much harder to read because it's got more information on it. And that additional information is there to reduce the amount of recent history you have to remember when reading the dome. And basically, I designed this tool because I have the memory of a goldfish. And although I really wanted to use the techniques I was taught to read order flow, I just couldn't find the tool to give me the information I need. I had to keep so much of it in my head. But it also takes away the need to perform a lot of these mental acrobatics that you need to when you're reading a traditional dome. So our lofty claim is that we present more information but we make it easier to read and that can only work if you aren't trying to read all the information at the same time. So let's go through the information on the screen and I'll tell you what I read and when what I look for. So first of all, the innermost blue red column are the bids and offers regular dome. So the blue ones, they have buy limit orders for somebody to come and sell to them and the red column is sell limit orders for somebody to come and buy from them. You can see first of all that some levels are highlighted and that's down to a feature of the product that highlights trades above a certain size and that helps to draw your eye automatically to areas of interest. Now on thinner markets like crude oil, there's a tendency for large orders to get taken out and then the market swiftly moves the other way. It's as if the size is attracting the, the traders. On thicker markets, it's somewhat different. And by thicker, I mean uh, with more numbers or higher numbers on the, the dome here. But on those thicker markets, it's somewhat different because the people putting in fake orders have more time to get out of the way if the market trades towards them. So a lot of this market manipulation, this spoofing, occurs on thicker markets because they can safely closer to the current price. But in both cases, thin and thick markets, the large bids and offers are worth looking out for. In terms of the bids and offers, I look for a few specific things and you will see these things on any trading dome. First of all, if I'm long, I want to see size bids below me, preferably following the move up. So on the e mini S&P 500, if I'm long, it would be nice to see a 1,000 or 1,500 lot bid below me and to see that move up moves up. Now if I'm long, what I don't want to see is massive bids below me. So again on this market, if I'm long and I see three or four levels below me with 3,000 contracts per level, I know the market's going to go down. 
very rarely the market's going to suddenly go down because I think those are, those are fake. I think those 3,000, 9,000 contracts at those levels, they're fake. Now, I don't have to let you boot this out of every trade. Because when you see these fake, this, this, these fake orders, these spoof orders, they're not going to kick off a full market reversal. It's often just faking people into the market for a four or six to drive against them. So if you're already in a trade and you've got a lot of room in that trade, you're already in profit, it's certainly not something you should worry about. But if you're just going to a trade and you see three or four levels with a lot of contracts below you, chances are it's going to go through there. Now if you see excessive offers at a high or resistance or excessive bids at a low or support, it doesn't mean much. And everybody should use this, okay? It's very normal to see these large bids and offers at support and resistance and it really isn't indicative that the market will hold. Because at any point of support and resistance, you should see bids below support or offers above resistance larger than normal. As I say, it doesn't mean the level will hold, but it does mean that other traders are watching that level. And it's a good way to validate your analysis. So if the bids and offers as you approach your levels are normal, then you shouldn't expect any reaction either way. You might want to rethink the way you came to that level because you really want to be looking for areas that will elicit a reaction and not just places where you and two other guys think it might turn. So you need participation to cause a reaction. You need other speculators there to help your move. So the bids and offers, just one thing you could take away from today is look at the bids and offers to your levels, that will help you validate them. Then we see excessive bids and offers elsewhere, you need to look on the other side. And a good example would be a market that came off its high and now has really big offers above making the market look weak. And effectively what you'll see is on the other side, you'll see selling but no price move down see that the bidders are actually trying to absorb selling and what they'll then do once they've taken their fill of selling they'll push the market up against the sellers and take them out. Now that's not something you have to trade with, it pays to be very wary of it because if you're short and you see this thing, sort of thing occur a few ticks below the high you have to be very wary okay. and again it's not something that will cause a full reversal very close to your entry price and you see that, you have to be very, very careful. Now between the bids and the offers, okay, something we call current trades. And on the left we have sellers in red selling to the bidders. And on the right we have buyers in blue buying from the offers. And this information is by far the most important information you will use. So this is your focus. This is where you'll see the major behavioural changes. So the numbers here are cumulative, we reset to zero when we come back to level later on. And we're seeing effectively what is trading into levels this time round, what the result is, and let's just uh, clear that, make it clear. And we advise all people new to order flow to initially focus on what's trading and nothing else. Now we can see the totals trading at each level here, but we don't see the individual trade side, and that is why we keep the reconstructed tape to the right. So we've got one place to see the totals and one place to see the individual trades, see whether they were large or not. And the things to focus on when you're looking at the actual trades are as follows. First of all, the proportion of size hitting each side. So usually on the way down, the sell size is going to be one and a half to two times the buy size. And you're looking for changes in that behavior, that balance. You're looking for ups and ticks down. And this is kind of harder to explain than to see, but basically, sometimes the market seems to hold ticks more easily one way than the other. So you might see the market move up to a point, it ticks up and then stays up for one second, then it drops down and trades 45 seconds before ticking up again and staying up for just one second. So it's not able to hold those ticks up. So you're watching how it's moving up and down, the pace of the market, and that stickiness. Now we also look for areas that very few traders want to trade. And it's very common to get to a price and see nothing trade there. Then you pull that price and goes back, nothing trades there again, or just a handful of contracts. And it will often do this three or four times before the other, other side initiative and steps in. And finally, 
look for areas where excessive volume trades. So you may see a move down, seeing 500 contracts hit the bid, then it ticks down. Then 600 hits the bid and it ticks down. Then 400 hits the bid and it ticks down. And then 3,000 contracts hit the bid and it doesn't tick down. And what that means is a bidder just stepped up and absorbed the selling. And now those later sellers are trapped. And if you see that in an area, you're interested in doing business, you're seeing the behavioral changes that you're expecting to see in that area. So it's here on the current trades that the major order flow patterns occur over and over again. And that's why we have people focus here first and use all the other aspects of order flow to supplement this information. And there are drills you can go through to ensure that you actually see these patterns for yourself. Now, over on the right, we have bid and offer profiles showing what hit into the bids and offers at each price. And once again, we see red for sellers that sold to the bids and blue for buyers that bought from the offers. And this one doesn't reset like the current trades. It's showing the total for the whole session since you last reset it. Okay? So you may decide that the market's moving back up and you want to actually clear what's above you so you go moving up into fresh areas. So you can reset that. Now on the left is a volume profile and the volume profile very simply shows you all trades at each price and we have the developing value area in orange, we have the purple uh, point of control and uh, we also have the VWAP highlighted in lime green. Now for seeing areas where traders are getting trapped, it's very useful to see it off a profile or a footprint chart. But when you return to an area later on where they got trapped, believe it's the volume profile over here that's the most useful. And the reason is as traders get trapped, it will often show as an imbalance on the bid offer profile as it does on a footprint chart. And you might have buyers predominant, but the offers are absorbing that buying. So you see more on the buy side than the sell side, an imbalance, it's a trap. But once you leave that area, all the imbalance is pretty meaningless. Every trade is a buy and a sell. The market's just a place for buyers to meet sellers. So when you build volume in an area, you have an equal amount of buys and sells. When you leave that area to the upside, the shorts get stopped out, and when you return, they tend not to engage again there. So it doesn't matter if they got short on the left or on the bid side or limit or market, the shorts are done. When you return to an area, the volume profile shows you all you need. What matters is where the book On the topic of trade locations, the column over here on the left is very simply for you to put your levels in from your pre-market analysis or any levels that come in as the day progresses. And the reason we have that there is that you don't have to take your eyes off the depth and sales. So this is your context, this is the areas you expect to see behavior change. Now let's move on to the outer blue and outer red columns, the snapshot. And this is one of the features that helps you reduce the memory skills you needed when using the dome. It shows traders adding or pulling contracts from the dome. Basically, whether traders are getting out of the way or getting more confident at defending a level. Now, like the current trades, this is also based on this time round. So when the inside bid and offer moves, this gets reset and we see the pulling and adding at a new level. And most of the time, this is of absolutely no interest to me at all. What I use it for is this. First of all, to identify iceberg orders. So we can see here what's bid at a price, we can see how many contracts have traded, and we can see how many have added, which is just over 300 right now at this price. So we can see how much they're adding contracts as people trade into a level. And that information is very key in terms of assessing whether an iceberg is being executed, but also whether you can join it. Because to join an iceberg, so let's say on the ES, bid point is 200 and it keeps refreshing and staying at 200 as sellers sell into it. So you might see a bid 500 and five, 200 and 500 trade and then it's still at 200 bid and another 400 trade and you still see 200 bid. See then, you'd see the 200 bid, see 900 contracts which we've almost got here on the, on the snapshot. So we can see here a little iceberg being executed where they're keeping the, the, the bids low but there's actually a lot more contracts hitting in. So if you see the bids being kept low, a lot of contracts trading, you've got a chance of actually joining that bid. 
But if you see the bids keep being kept at like a thousand contracts as they add more con uh, as they add more contracts, the chances of you actually hitting that iceberg and getting filled are very, very, very small. And this is very simple stuff, but it's only really applicable when you're just about to enter a trade. I'm talking about entering a trade. I also use a snapshot to finesse an entry. Now, most of the time, I'm waiting for the market to show its hand in the order flow. So I've got levels that I want to trade, but they're more like areas to me, just areas I'm interested in. So let's say I wanted to go long, and the order flow is confirming sellers are weak. I think the sellers are done. I will now watch the bids and offers, as well as the snapshot, the, the snapshot, the pulling and stacking. Now my mouse would be hovering over the DOM here, ready to hit into the offers when I think they're about to break. So I'm waiting for the sellers to collapse. I'm waiting for the offers above to break and the bids below to form off, firm up. And I want to see the orders pulling above and being added below. And as I watch this, the bids below me will pull out of the way or the offers will get above me will get stronger and I'll wait. And sometimes I'll wait to go long, but the bids pull and the markets tick down. So what I'll do then is I'll wait to go long at the next lower price. The bids pull again, it ticks down again. Next thing you know, you're four or five ticks down, the offers are still strong, the bids are weak, and you're still not long. In that position then, I'll look at the recon tape, see where the large size is, look at the current trade, see how much he's trading. I think maybe, yeah, maybe it still looks okay to go long at this point, uh, or maybe the trade's not on. But, you know, the worst case is, I've actually got in at a better price. But other than that, in the snapshot at all. I just don't use it any of the other time. So while I'm waiting, while I'm watching the market play out, unless I'm just poised to enter, I'm just not interested in it. The jigsaw has six power meters. I use just four of them, but let's just have a look at the ones I do use. Um, power meters here are associated with the depth and sales. Uh, this one here is going to the trades, the buy market orders versus sell market orders. So this is a running total of how many sell market orders which is the red ones, and how many buy market orders hit the offer. And this can be reset at any time, or it should be able to reset. I can't. Um, should be able to reset that with the R button. So, excuse me, I'll check that one second. We've got the wrong one on. Okay. This is the trade, sorry. Here's resetting the trades. The second one. I've got here is actually giving me a visual representation of the market depth. And again, I don't really use that a hell of a lot unless I see a massive imbalance on there. The other meters down here are not associated with the reconstructed tape. Now I can show the trades, the filter trades on the reconstructed tape, or I can show what's happened in the last 60 seconds happened in the last 180 seconds. So I can see here the trades, the red for the sell market orders, blue for the buy market orders for the past 60 seconds. And, uh, and you can set the number of seconds uh, yourself. It's showing trailing information. It doesn't seconds. So I like to look at all trades on this, but you could set it to just show the filter trades over there. And this gives you a visual on whether a major order flow shift is occurring. And this is also key when you get to a level you're interested in doing business. It also helps to confirm pullbacks. Because on a pullback, the market should be pulling back. Order flow on the pullback side should be neutral to insignificant. Okay? So sometimes you're actually looking for the lack of order flow imbalance to help you confirm a pullback is not a full reversal. Okay? Now for the current trade meters here, I tend to use this mostly yeah, trade. So let's just um, thin trade. Move that out of the way. Okay, so we've entered the market, and a few things happens when I enter the market. The meter here, I believe, it went to went to meter, the power meter for the current trades reset. We also recentered the dome around the entry price, and we reset the current trades. So what's happening now is I'm just looking at the order flow I got into the trade. So now we're able to make a distinction between price moving against us and order flow moving against us. And I don't mind price moving against me as long as the order flow is weak to neutral. So if I'm long and the quantity sell orders is two times the buy orders, and the price is moving down, I'll, cu I'll cut the trade. And finally, the last thing we want to look at 
is over here we have this chat icon and that takes you directly to the free jigsaw chat room where you can talk to us and other traders. So we like to get our customers talking to each other and exchanging ideas, which is why a lot of our customers have their own YouTube channels with recordings of their trading on Jigsaw. And people sometimes just pop in to ask a question about the tools, uh, but most of the people are coming in every day. Mostly we're active in the AM session uh, of the US, at uh, the AM of the US session, so about 8.30. And that basically covers a quick introduction to water flow using Jigsaw tools. Um, as I mentioned all earlier, this should be not be rocket science. So we recommend people start with order flow, just watching the trade sprint on depth and sales for 60 to 90 minutes at a time, two times a day. And within five to six sessions of doing this, you should be seeing certain things play out. You should have that aha moment. And I'm not going to give you any sales pitch on this. You guys will know you're struggling with trade confirmation, and you guys will know you're at the point where you need to try this. Now, we believe we've got the best software for those wanting to incorporate order flow into their trading. And we've seen many traders turn the corner in their trading, incorporating order flow into their trading with the help of our tools, our free training resources, but most of all their own hard work. You can read reviews from many of these people, not on our website, an independent website called Investimonial, investimonials.com, where we're rated number one in the trading software category and number four overall out of over 10,000 financial products. This sort, of work, this sort of analysis isn't for everyone. And that's why we have a policy to refund the purchase price if it doesn't suit you. And the purchase price is $399.99. All of the educational material we have is free. Uh, not because we're generous, but because I got sick of answering the same questions over and over again. And in fact, as Reid said earlier, there are a number of proprietary trading firms their educational material as part of their educational programs to teach their new traders. And we also talk to our customers both one-on-one -on -one in the Jigsaw chat, chat room and on Skype. And these techniques really are the building blocks to professional proprietary trading. If you go and work in a prop shop, these are the techniques they'll have you using. And as mentioned before, many prop firms will allow their traders to only trade off order flow until they get profitable. They want them to see the order flow, so you have four charts. Now, one final piece of advice if you come to look at order flow is don't throw away the things from your tra trading that are currently working for you. Because unless you're a scalper, you'll be using tools like Jigsaw in context. So it's not intended to replace everything else you know about trading. Because sometimes in the excitement of seeing order flow events play out in real time, Many traders jump on these events without considering the overall context. And in real terms, that means you could get into a valid short scalp that gives you three ticks profit and you exit the long trade of the day is setting up that you already knew was going to happen because you already, you already had that level in your pre-market prep. And that was certainly my experience and the experience of a lot of people water flow when they're starting out. I, don't know, I hope you found that information of some use and I'm sorry about the mic fading in and out. And uh, I think we've got five minutes for some questions. Um, and stocks. The, okay, for stocks, let me just answer about penny stocks. If you're using order flow on stocks, you want to really look at stocks that are trading about 400,000 contracts a day, uh, price range $20 to $80. Um, you need an amount of volume to be trading. Um, in order to kind of benefit from this. Uh, one of the comments, the DOM is a bit confusing. Absolutely agree. Just trying to read everything at the same time is very confusing. We generally get people to start seeing things on the order flow they can use in their trading, believe it or not, in seven or eight hours because we have a specific set of drills that we put people through to just focus on a subset of the information. Try and focus on too many things. If you try and focus too much on the bids and offers, it becomes very confusing. Now, are there any free order flows from Jigsaw Tools? No. Uh, do we have any more questions? Somebody asked where the data is from. Well, I trade predominantly futures, so data comes from IQ Feed, Kinetic, CQG, Rhythmic, um, any you know most IQ, most retail brokers, retail futures brokers give you a data feed. They do come in varying uh, degrees of quality. Any more questions? For three, 
is not something that retail get traders get hold of. Level three is really a tool for market makers. A room with a live dome, we're actually going to be opening a, a, a room with a, where somebody takes it on live. But if you want to see live trades, you can just go to our blog. Lots and lots of live trade videos. There's also lots and lots of YouTube channels of Jigsaw users. But also, if you try Jigsaw and you don't like it, um, you get your money back. And also, at the bottom there, you can see, do sign up between now and the end of July. There is actually a coupon code there on the screen. Uh, that you can take advantage of to get a 10% discount. Um, in terms of the chart on the left, um, it's really, I really mostly use the chart on the left to identify the amount of volume in a swing or a move and the amount of ticks in a move. Because as an order flow trader, I believe participation is king. And if I see a swing up with a lot of volume and a swing down with weak volume, swing down is a, is a pullback and that's kind of it's just about participation it's just about speculation if people aren't involved in the move it won't be sustained anyway I've got through most of the questions um, I just flick over to my the trading subscription there is a $50 fee if you want to actually place live trades through the tool um, a lot of our customers just use jigsaw place uh, to, to analyze the market and not place trades, uh, but a lot of the professional customers actually place trades through the tool. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, www.jigsawtrading.com, uh, you can contact us through there, um, or you can send us an email, um, the email address is ptdavies at jigsawtrading.com.